One of my favorite things in math is cool proofs and cool proof techniques. If we have two expressions, say we have this expression x and we have this other expression I'll just represent with a y, and we want to show that these two expressions are equal, how the heck do we do it? Of course, it depends on what the expressions are and everything. Often, algebra would be attempted. But there's one really cool technique called a double counting proof. One way to show that x is equal to y is to take this set of objects, whatever it is, and show that both x and y count this set of objects. If x gives me an accurate count of the number of objects in this collection, and so does y, well, certainly, they must be equal. This proof technique is generally used in combinatorics, mathematics concerned with counting and counting problems, but you can see variations of it in other very simple problems as well. For example, the commutativity of multiplication. How do we know that 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2? Well, when I look at a rectangular array of 6 dots, I could count the number of dots in this array in two manners. I could look at it as two groups of three, or I could look at it as three groups of two. So clearly two times three is equal to three times two. They're both just different ways of counting the number of dots in this rectangle. Another classic example you might have seen comes from the distributive property. How do we know that a times b plus c is equal to ab plus ac? How do we know that multiplication distributes over addition like this? Well, we can justify it using a rectangle and calculating its area in two different ways. Let's say we have this rectangle and its width is a and let's say its length is b plus c. So this part here has a length of b, this part here has a length of c. In total the length of the rectangle is b plus c. So then what's the area of the rectangle? Well obviously if I just do height times the length it's a times b plus c. But another way to do it is to cut up the rectangle. Let's cut it up right after this segment that has length b and then we can calculate its area as the area of these two smaller rectangles. The area of this one is obviously length, length times width, which is a times b, and the area of this one is just width times length, so a times c. In this way, again, I calculate the area of the rectangle, but this gives me the expression on the right. Either way, both of these expressions are the area of the same rectangle, so they have to be equal. So that's the double counting technique. We show that two expressions count the same thing, and so they must be equal. Here's a more classic example from combinatorics. Suppose we want to count the number of ways to select a committee of K people from a group of n people. So we have n people and we want to select a committee of k of them. To count the number of ways we can do this, one way is to just count the number of ways to pick k people from a group of n people. And we have a mathematical symbol for that. It's this, called a binomial coefficient. We read this as n choose k. It is precisely the number of ways to choose k people from a group of n. So this is certainly an answer to this question. If you've not seen this symbol before, for just as a quick intro, it's equal to this, n factorial divided by k factorial multiplied by n minus k factorial. Understanding this symbol as the number of ways to pick k people from a group of n people, there is another way we could count the number of ways to select a committee of k from a group of n. Let's suppose our group of n people has somebody named John. Let's first count the number of committees of K people that include John. If we're going to include John, then there are only N minus one people left to choose from. And if we're trying to form a committee of K people, then we have K minus one people left to choose. So this would count all of the committees of K people that include John. Now, if we want to count up all committees of K people total, we also need to consider the committees that don't include John. How many committees don't include John? Well, there are 
n minus one people we could choose total because we're saying that we're not gonna include John. And among those people that are not John, we need to select k of them. This counts the committees of k people that include John. This counts the committees of k people that don't include John. In total, it counts the number of committees of k people. And so certainly it has to equal this on the left n choose k is equal to n minus 1 choose k minus 1 plus n minus 1 choose k. This is called Pascal's identity, and if you're familiar with Pascal's triangle, this equation describes the pattern that we see in Pascal's triangle, that each number is equal to the sum of two numbers above it. Here's another example. Let's say we have a group of n people total, and we're trying to count the number of ways that we can pick a team of size s, so we have a team of s people, and we want r captains, so we need to pick a team of s people, and we need to pick r captains. So how many ways can we pick a team of size s with r captains from a group of n total people? One way would be to say, well, let's count the number of ways we can pick our team of size s, which would just be n choose s, and then for every way we can pick a team of s from n people, there would be s choose r ways to pick r captains from that team of s people. So this is counting the number of ways to pick the team, and then for every way we could do that, this is the number of ways we could pick our captains from the s people that are on the team. That's one way to count this. Another way would be to pick out the r captains first. Then we would have n choose r ways to pick r captains from the n total people that are available. And then we need to consider how many ways could we pick the rest of the team. Well, for every way that we could pick r captains from the group of n people, there are n minus r people left to choose from and we need to pick s minus r people to fill out our team because we need a team of size s and at this point we've already chosen the r captains as a result these two expressions must be equal because they both count the number of ways to pick a team of size s with r captains from a group of n people let's do one more example where we use double counting to show that something couldn't have happened Let's say at a party of nine people, everybody claims that they partook in three handshakes. Is this possible that all of the nine people could have participated in three handshakes? Well, let's think about counting. Let's count the number of times an individual participated in a handshake at this party. One way to count that is just nine times three. There are nine people and they each claim they participated in three handshakes, so nine times 3, and of course that gives us 27. Another way to count the number of times a person participated in a handshake is to take the number of handshakes, let's say it's n, that's our number of handshakes, and multiply it by 2, because every handshake involves two people participating in it. So 2n would count the number of times a person has participated in a handshake total among all nine people. But of course, we just counted that as 27. So 27 would have to equal two times the number of handshakes. These two things are equal because they count the same thing, the number of times somebody participated in a handshake at the party. But clearly this equation cannot be true. N, the number of handshakes, is an integer, and there's no way you can have an even number, two times an integer, equaling 27. This on the left is odd, this on the right is even. This can't be possible. And so somebody here is being duplicitous. Somebody is lying about the number of times they shook hands. Anyways, those are some fun examples of a double counting, a classic and really cool combinatorial proof technique. If you're not familiar with these binomial coefficients, most of this probably made no sense. I'll leave a link in the description to a video where we talk about these some more with an introductory lens. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet. Slow down, give me the time so I can fake it. Erase it, doing the words and just how I say shit. And let me speak my poetry to your face. It's not in a minute if you ain't listening. Not infinite if you ain't really in the head.